it is day four of the European Mugabe Games. Thank you, Hofstrap Sports. Herzlich willkommen bei Hauptstadt Sport TV hier bei den Maccabi Games aus dem Olympia Park. Welcome to the Maccabi Games at Hauptstadtsports.tv. Hello and welcome to Hauptstadt Sport TV. This is the fourth day of the European Maccabi Games and all the athletes have to get here to the Olympic Park every day. It is about 45 to 60 minute bus ride and yeah, right now we are having, uh, where are you from? Hi, I'm BJ Dunn. I'm the uh, head basketball coach for the Open Team for USA. We're really excited to be here. I appreciate you having me on this. So, uh, what are you doing today? Uh, right now, we're going to go support the field hockey uh, USA uh, field hockey team. We're also going to go support the uh, junior male soccer team from USA. We're going to have a great lunch with the women's soccer team, and we're going to go beat the Russians tonight at 4:15. That's a good plan, huh? Yes, it's a great plan. So how's the tournament going so far? It's been really well. Um, you know, one, the experience. We have an incredible group of uh, men from all over the country. We have two pros. We have a bunch of Division One basketball players, a couple of D3 guys. Um, came together as strangers last week, and now we're a family. And we've really been excited to compete while we've been here. Um, EMG has put on an incredible show. It's been really fortunate to be part of it. OK, thank you very You're much, very and good luck. All right, thank you. Just gotta get, 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 get and ready. we're going to keep going with basketball, Germany against Israel, Gerrit Lagenstein. Welcome back to Semmeringstraße. In contrast to the second day of the European Maccabi Games, the juniors stood in the focus today. To be precise, the juniors from Israel and Germany. On Tuesday, both teams in the open class lost their games, so today it was interesting to see which team could rely more on the support of their young players. After a few minutes, the answer was already obvious. Germany with the lead, Dean Adinast was successful. But that was it for quite a while. In fact, Israel started their lay-up express and scored one basket after the other. Every attempt of the German team was destroyed before they could succeed. Subsequently, Israel with a considerable lead, 16-15, to 15, the halftime score. The German team had to suspect the worst, but they could improve their game at the beginning of the second half. They still lost the ball quite often and made it easy to score for the team from Israel. But once in a while they reacted successfully. Jan Menitsky tried it from downtown and made it. Israel did not have to rely on solo actions. They had several guards who made the baskets. In the eyes of Gail Zebak, this was the key to the 120 to 37 success of his team. We won because we played together and uh, we didn't uh, we play as a team. We didn't play uh, everyone as a, as a player uh, by himself. And, uh, that's our secret. Of course, the German Maccabi squad is also a team, but unfortunately one that is not as well practiced as the team from Israel. However, Georg Kokoliev still has his hopes up for the last group match. If we now get a good rest, we might be able to come back tomorrow and win against Great Britain. This match will not be on our show, but we have more basketball on Monday, when a German team encounters one from Israel again. At the Let's Play Together event, players from Alba Berlin and Maccabi Tel Aviv will show off their skills. Yeah, we changed the sport. We're now at the badminton arena. And we have a prominent guest here, Mark Zwiebler. He is a European championship in badminton. And he's also the patron of badminton. Uh, how did that come? To be honest, they asked me. And uh, it didn't take me long to say yes. Uh, I think it's a big honor for, for me and for all Germans uh, that uh, Germany and Berlin is hosting this European Maccabi Games. Um, and I'm very glad I made it to Berlin. And do you also think it's uh, important for Berlin or it's a great thing for Berlin to host these Maccabi Games if you look at the history? Sure, if you look at all the, the buildings here and the venues, also at the opening ceremony yesterday at the Waldbühne, uh, it's all uh, very historical um, uh, venues and uh, I think it's, it's a great, um, it shows great trust uh, from the Jewish community to host the event in these uh, kind of venues and uh, yeah, I'm very happy that it went all so well so far and I'm looking forward to more. Have you seen any of the sports so far? Not yet. Um, I just arrived yesterday. Uh, I'm very happy to be in the Batman Hall as, as my own sports, of course, but I'll uh, have the chance to go to the swimming later and uh, we'll walk around and catch some of the atmosphere. 
Okay, thank you very much and good luck for the World Championships that are going to uh, come up next. And we're going to stay here and uh, check out the finals. This is badminton. Everything before was only something close to it. The men's single final between Alan Shackman from the United States and Alan Plavin from Lithuania was as dramatic as could be. The six times U.S. junior champion and the gold medalist from the past two European Maccabi games did not give away presents in a very close match. But let's start at the beginning. In the morning, Baray Efraim Savar from Berlin had to experience the strength of the Americans in the doubles. Together with his partner Michael Renzil, he lost to Shekman Berdichevsky in the quarterfinals. For Baray Efraim, not a big disappointment, because for him, the European Maccabi Games stand for... Being together, no matter how different we are, in which nation we live, that we as Jews have similarities apart from our religion. We have kosher food everywhere around us that brings us close together. After a joint lunch, they had to go back to the arena, whereas Shackman still had to play several mixed doubles. Alan Plavin got ready for the final in his own way. Once the match starts, the player from Lithuania is wide awake. The first set he loses 17 to 21, but in the second set the 20-year-old shows off his skills, wins the set 21 to 14 and enforces a final set. Shackman with a better start into the final set, but Plavin does not give up. He fights himself back into the match and keeps it level. At 18-18, he did not have anything left to throw in. Shackman with the better nerves wins set, match, and the tournament with 21 to 18. I know that we are the same strength. Uh, I, you know, I have some tremendous respect for this opponent. He's very quick, and uh, I was feeling a lot of pressure on me. So as an athlete, I have to slow down, calm myself down, be ready to handle the pressure. Uh, we're playing a little bit against the elements here because we have a lot of sunlight coming in it's very hard to see in the hall so it's you know one time you're on the good side one time you're on the bad side and it's a very strategic game uh, but we have to adjust you have to play smart and calm yourself down to play your best game at the end both can rejoice over a gold medal because as non-european Shackman is non-competitive this is the place where every athlete likes to be best because this is the so-called medal plaza. Here are the medals given away to the athletes. And this is not the only place, not only in the Olympic Park you can tell that the European Maccabi Games are in town. Also there are several events all over the city. And last night there was a big reception at the Rote Rathaus and Rafael Knob was there. Three is the magic number. This is why the Berlin government chose the third day of the European Maccabi Games to welcome everybody to the Rote Rathaus. After the opening night at the Estrell Hotel and the magical opening ceremony at the Waldbühne, it was a little more festive in the ballroom. Skirts and suits the dress code, but the same fun. I used to be a professional swimmer, competed with a national team, and so... I used to be a professional swimmer, competed with the national team, and so far I am very close to sports. I am good friends with the director of Maccabi Germany, Alon Meyer, and when he asked me, I did not hesitate a minute. Coming from Berlin, it is an honor to do this here at the Rote Rathaus. With her bright smile, the TV star from Berlin led through the evening. About 150 invited guests, among them politicians, organizers and the Maccabi bikers, took part in the celebration. Speeches, music and most important, just being together. From now on, the view goes ahead. Besides the political and historical importance, the sport still stands in the foreground. I hope they will have a lot of fun in our city. I also hope that they can show their best at the right moment and they will experience fair and successful games. By the way, Frank Henkel told us he already visited some of the competitions. We did too and we will keep doing it. I am here at the hockey stadium now and later Germany is going to play Argentina and in the German team we have Deborah. Deborah is uh, the granddaughter of Hans Rosenthal. Hans Rosenthal was a big showmaster in German television and yeah Deborah how is it to play here in Berlin? Well it's really exciting um, we are all quite happy to play here and um well, yeah, it's uh, even better than we actually thought it would be here to play in Germany. 
You've played at the Maccabi Yad in Israel and now you're playing here. Can you compare the two events? Yeah, you definitely can compare it because um, in hockey we are nearly the same teams. Here's the USA, here's um, the Dutch team and the Argentina team. So, um, well, you can compare it, but in the Maccabi Yad in Israel is way much bigger than here. Do people ask you a lot about uh, your history, about your grandfather while you're here? Well, normally they don't ask that much. In the uh, few parts, in the, the last years, there were a few more questions about it, but um, normally they won't. No. <laughs> so it's just a normal, you're just a normal player in the team? Yes, that's how it should be and that's how it is, yeah. And how is it for you? Is it just a normal tournament? No, I wouldn't say that. To play in the um, shirts and everything from the German national team, it's much more exciting than playing in my normal stuff. Thank you, Debbie, and good luck. Yeah, the German team lost their first game to the Netherlands, 1-2, to two, and the Netherlands already had their second game today. And Benjamin Pila knows how it ended. The U.S. girls are in a tight spot. Two games, two losses, not a good result for the ladies in blue jerseys. Their opponent today is the favorite of the tournament, the Netherlands, who have won their first two games. With a shout and a smile, they go into the game. The Netherlands, the dominant team, not a surprise since four of the girls normally play in the first league. One of them is anne Sarah Breuer, who has the first chance to score. Beside the first league girls are also Bush League players on the team. This makes the European Maccabi game so special. It's very nice. They learn a lot from us and uh, I learn a lot from them because I learned how to play with not so good people. So uh, it's very nice. I like it. So even Teddy Kloster can still learn. She played in the first league for Amsterdam and Den Bosch. Although she is only 20 years old, the European Maccabi Games will be her last tournament. She's going to retire from hockey. If the Netherlands keep up their good game, she will crown her career with a title. So they had to win against Team USA. At halftime, the score wasn't promising, no goals on either side. The Netherlands not good in using their chances. In addition, they had no luck in front of the goal. This did not change at the beginning of the second half. Oranje predominant and finally with the first goal, Gutsmith makes it 1-0. Once they got the neck, everything seems to be easy. Breuer sees Kloster, goal 2-0. And one more, Teddy Kloster all by herself makes her second goal in the match. It feels great. Yesterday I, uh, I played a good game and the game before I played also a good game. But I really want to score and everyone said to me, uh, you have to score Teddy. So uh, I was very happy that I, uh, I scored a goal and the last one was very nice. So I'm happy. <laughs> one strike will still have, though it wasn't a goal. Luckily nothing serious happened. Deborah Feimer is already smiling again after the match. She has got many reasons. With the victory, the Netherlands take the first place in their group and face the U.S. again in the semifinals. We are at the football right now and there's a lot going on here. People are here to support their teams, but not just their teams because uh, Germany is playing USA and we have somebody from Great Britain. Who are you for? Um, I'm Ben Rodel and we are watching Germany because they're our next game tomorrow, I believe. Um, we played USA yesterday and beat them. Um, we won again today. Um, we're on good form, we're playing well, so we're just not having to watch the opponents. We do all right. So you hope for the US to win? Yeah, yeah, we hope for the USA win. That's what we're looking for. And how do you like it here in Berlin? Uh, it's a really good city. Um, I like the mix because it's quite modern and there are some quite old-fashioned bits which 
it's a good mix to see what happens. And um, it's quite a cultural city, which I like, which I like a lot. And I really enjoy it. It's really the city. Okay, thank you very much, and good luck. And uh, yes, we are at the end of our show for today. And yeah, we're going to be back tomorrow. Until then, you can click on Facebook or Twitter and check us out there. And until then, stay sporty. See you soon. Der verdient den Namen.